Hey guys, George here, and uh, as you can see, I have my hard hat on, or uh, hard hat on, or my <laughs> hard head, <laughs> thinking cap on, because I'm going to bring you a very heavy scenario, an after action report on a very heavy scenario. U25, breakout from Borisov. Mark Dennehy as the Germans, I as the Russians. It took us roughly two and a half years with some interruption in gameplay and whatnot and uh, rescheduling of our game night over some time uh, to complete this. So I have over 20 logs. I cannot go through with the logs. It will take almost indefinitely or I would have to break it up into three three hour videos. Um, well, what I'd like to bring to you is the events after the end of each player turn to the best of my uh, recollection. Now, uh, let's zoom in on the map and see how things are, are going. So we could have basically uh, placed our, our uh, snipers anywhere. Um, strategically, I placed it on this hill here uh, because um, it would um, prevent, probably prevent a leader from going there and with an MG and and trying to eliminate folks from over here. Uh, Mark placed it correctly in that village board. Uh, and what you see here is this empty board. It's non-passable terrain, but I believe we do have line of sight through it. We zoom in here and look at the victory conditions. The Russians win a game end by controlling more boards than the Germans. Control on a board is accomplished by having greater than or equal to twice minimum one as many VP on the board than the enemy, excluding hexes shared by uh, two or more boards. VP are counted as good order exit VP, excluding prisoners are not applicable. Okay, so the Germans start with already having had their uh, uh, movement points at half of what they are supposed to be. And basically, that little uh, that um, uh, handicaps the German player by quite a bit. Um, on the other hand, here I am as a Russian player, poised to come in with cavalry, tanks, and the whole kit and caboodle. So the scenario takes place in Borisov on the seventh of July, nineteen forty-one. It's a summer. And it's a summer. Now, um, um, Mark was very methodical in, in advancing the Germans, as you can see. Uh, he did not take any positions on board one, which has um, two level uh, buildings that can oversee quite a long distance. And with this long range, he could have taken that advantage of that, but he chose instead to advance further onto the board. Because uh, he knew quite well if he didn't prevent the Russians from, from occupying um, quite a bit of boards, uh, uh, he would have lost. And in my case, what I did was I see in COI when I played it, uh, COI is uh, this game over here. When I played it in COI, I had lost again, <laughs> even as the Germans. But um, uh, at the COI level, there was a specific um, type of unit that was designated as cavalry, and everybody else was in cavalry. But in this game here, you could very well take six to eight engineers and or elites and put them on on uh, horses to gain um, uh, movement points. Um, and don't ask me about the cavalry rules because already I've, I've forgotten about them. Um, I need to recap. Um, so uh, uh, my strategy here was to put conscripts in the rear, and I. Typically, that's the contrary to what I do. What I do is try to throw the the the, um, the conscripts into uh, headlong battle, uh, have them break and disrupt, and uh, so they can um, break up German advances, uh, cause them to take prisoners, or 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 have them have your opponent declare um, no quarter, so you can low crawl your better units out out, out of their way. Um, so my strategy was establish a, a, a strong presence here, um, 
and try to take over the village, especially the center, because the Russian player, if I remember correctly, has the full movement point. So I shouldn't have had any problem getting into the board, into the village hex, and preventing the Russian player, or, or rather preventing the German player from getting a good foothold on it. On the other side of the board, um, I was going to take advantage of the woods and entrenching in the woods to make it impossible for the German player to dislodge me. The same thing more or less went for board two, but I also had um, wanted to um, take my tanks, especially the ones with great mobility, and put them on the level three hexes of hill number uh, 621 here on board two. Let's see how things transpired. So that, this is turn 1A. Let's look at turn 2, uh, 1B. So 1B, uh, the plan pretty much uh, fell into place, um, especially for board 5. I was quite uh, happy with my progress in, 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 uh, on board 5. The only mistake I think, I believe I did is putting people here in the tree line. Uh, these folks here, this group here, let's zoom in on that. This group here, their objective was to get onto board number two. My tanks uh, made some headway. I'm using, uh, I'm using um, motion status to uh, prevent myself from having to take um, uh, reliability uh, checks, mobility checks, because with a red uh, MP number, um, you have to roll the dice to see if your 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 tank will go or not. Um, so I brought a plethora of tanks up here as well. Uh, and eventually, uh, these tanks here that are with a low mobility would end up covering here. Now, there's one thing I really forgot and I did not really um, think about it, is that there's Stukas in this game, <laughs> at least two. So in terms of AA guns, you've got none. But in terms of light AA, the only light AA uh, weapon you can use are heavy machine guns. So typically, I should have formed fire groups with tanks around um, around um, uh, the heavy machine guns in such a fashion that when the Stukas come to attack your tanks, you open up with heavies, you blow them out of the sky. It's not too hard to do. Let's see. Typically, I think you roll on the I, IFT for on the star line for for Stuka. So with a heavy, it's a seven or less to to uh, shoot down a Stuka. It ain't bad, but I didn't do that. But what I did well was, and remarkably, um, more due to luck than anything else, is I positioned my ATRs and. Uh, what I like to call City Hall or, or the church in uh, board 3, N2, N1, M2. So that was an anti-tank stronghold. All right, let's go on to 2A. Uh, 2A, um, here's where uh, Mark, uh, as the German player, really used uh, the mobility to... Uh, if the full extent possible. Also, concealment was well, very well used because here we have a, a slew of units coming onto uh, board two. And he completely dislodged himself from board one, which typically is something I wouldn't do. I would try and take advantage of uh, my long range weapons and have them in the rear, but with open line of sights to fire at a long distance. And he quickly uh, attempted to um, gain a foothold in the village. Um, the good thing about it was, was that the good thing about his uh, uh, move was he kept virtually concealment everywhere. And um, I think he, he has some of the initiative here. Um, We'll see. All right. To, to be, or not to be, pardon the cliche. 
So now my tanks are attempting to come in here. And you see labor uh, counters everywhere because the first thing that I've tried to do was to entrench my units in at least two uh, out of the five boards that are playable. Um, my Russian tanks didn't quite make it to their objectives and that uh, hurt me in the end. Um, another tank here became immobile. I started uh, incurring a few broken squads uh, because this fellow was well positioned here, point point. And this is why I put my sniper there. I don't think the sniper played much of a role here. Uh, what did play um, much of a role was the AT guns and the ATRs, believe it or not, and the Stuka. So those three elements really uh, moved the game between one side and the other. And I'll explain to you as we go along. <laughs> so here's my stronghold. You see, see that stack? There's units on the ground floor, on ground number, on, on the first floor, and soon to be on the uh, second floor. There are, there are ATRs guarding this location, and you could possibly ask, what can he possibly do with an ATR? Guys, don't forget, this is a Russian ATR. So a Russian ATR, let's look at the two kill tables, and you're looking at the red colored letters called ATR, um, not black ATR. Black ATR is a five. Uh, a, a red ATR is a basic to kill number of six. This is early war, so not all tanks have great armor. And then if if you if this fellow here they they want to try and take him out, they have to come in close, oh, either through the wall or here. Oh, sorry, forgive me. That's two hexes away. So then you're looking at a six. And at two hexes away, all right, you've got to increase the two kill number by one, according to the range modifications. That makes it a seven. If they're point blank, one to zero hexes away, add two. That makes it an eight, which is a not decent two kill number, given that not all these uh, uh, armor units that he has and, and vehicles that he has have great armor. Hmm. And here we go. And this is 3A. 3A right here what has happened is that he has made uh, great inroads into uh, board 2. Uh, so he has a couple of units here and there are a couple of armor units. Look these armor units that are under concealment are a stone throw away from level three. Once they get up there, I'm afraid that, you know, uh, my advance here will be stalled. Um, nonetheless, the Germans have made uh, great, uh, uh, the Russians made get, uh, great strides in advancing. I abandoned the horses, they've done their job. I'm entrenching in board number four but the German player has a foothold on the village. Does that prevent me from advancing? Nah. And, and here's the smoke he laid down to allow this group of units go, to go across the back end of the uh, hill board. We had uh, a great uh, discussion talking about these armored, well, they're half tracks, uh, unarmored half tracks. There are two stars there. That means that he's on armor. Take a closer look into that guy. See that? Hmm. So I got the church. He is flanking me. I got ATRs here galore. And these tanks are heavily armored tanks. But once I stop them, they're sitting ducks. <laughs> once I stop them, they're sitting ducks. And look at the armor in, the, in this here. Two and one with, with one for the turret. Now, let's, let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at this. Uh, I think it's a T26 or a T28. Let's take a look at it. Red 22. The red 22 means that I have to do a mechanical reliability check every time I stop and go. Um, this platoon movement. So 
if you if the German player knocks out a tank in a platoon, then there there's a task check that needs to be taken for the first the other tank the surviving tank to move plus a mechanical reliability check. And um, the forty five L uh, though is is a a gun to be reckoned with because look it's an L type weapon so after thirteen hexes they get an extra uh, number on uh, on the to kill and a 45L has a 10 to kill and again you might say oh that's really low compared to late war but for early war uh, when you're dealing with uh, armored fighting vehicles that have a, um, a low armor it's pretty good. Excellent use of smoke here but as you can see uh, the foothold here was very precarious. A couple of lucky shots. Was the sniper activated? I think it was. Uh, no, it wasn't. Our snipers were not activated. Well, they didn't move from their locations. Okay, 3A, let's go to 3B. I may have forgotten to take some pictures. Who knows? Um, okay, so my armor is making advances. The infantry is moving. The infantry designated for board two is moving uh, closer to their objectives. Um, these guys have established a permanent location there. And um, basically what I've done here is I got my 10 minus two leader with a six to eight ready to advance uh, into here, into the, a stone building location. So I would have two stone building locations plus Russian infantry here. And again, I'm not too sure if that was the brilliant thing to do or not. Um, and what Mark is doing here is he's advancing his AT guns to the high ground, but only locally. He's not concerned about this location here in board two because uh, the armor slow moving and the fast moving armor I basically wrecked it. I wrecked it because I brought it into the village. And the other thing you need to be weary of is that some Russian armor doesn't don't have machine guns. So you you bring armor tanks that don't have uh, functioning MGs into the village you stand a very big chance of getting ambushed, uh, street fighting, and in close combat, there's an additional modifier against your favor because you don't have functioning machine guns. So at this point, I'm saying something to the effect that it's almost a stalemate. Um, the conscripts are being knocked off by this fellow here and uh, knocking him back. Let's go on to the next board. There's a total of 10 turns. 4A. 4A. Uh, we have an AT gun here. That's well placed. He establishes a nice uh, fire group here to take on the folks that are behind the wall. He has a, a nice foothold in the, in the village, actually. And how do I respond to that? By attacking it. <laughs> Instead of letting him come to me, I'm attacking it. So, uh, and here, um, here, he has this, uh, this fire group now cornered with his armor. Um, and these guys are sandwiched in the village now. The other end of the spectrum, I would soon find out that this is a 10 minus 3 liter with a half squad and an MMG. Um, their advance, he's advancing with his armor against this, uh, this uh, line of troops. He is defending on the reverse slope here, so he, he is not engaging the armor, but deterring it from getting the heights. Very unfortunate on my part. Very unfortunate. 
And believe it or not, we'll soon find out how powerful a 10 minus 3 liter really is, even from a distance. <laughs> All right, let's go on to 4B. 4B. We had a little firefight here. So we took out the tank that was fa facing down here. Here's his 10 minus 3 liter. I called him Wilts. This fellow here took out a tank with his, with his um, heavy machine gun and laid waste to this, to this uh, tree-line uh, fire group of infantry here. Laid waste to them. So it's a plus two, minus three. He has, he has a six down one shot on everybody there, despite the fact that they're in woods and shell holes, foxholes, pardon my expression. This tank was burnt completely. Okay. And he's really outnumbering me in armor. Here, uh, he mouthed uh, the Stug's weapon. Um, this tank became immobilized. Um, this tank was firing there. He managed to immobilize them. And here is my illustrious advance into the stone building to try and expel these guys or prevent them from going forward. Uh, the tanks here are, look, KV-1, 152, laying waste to this these guys or, or deterring them from advancing. And uh, his tanks are also trying to outflank me. These guys are peacefully staying out of the fight and uh, just entrenching and holding their positions. And I think that it's coming to a point where this tank will be knocked out. Uh, in part because it is guarding this area here from advancement. Yep. Uh, 5A. 5A, the tanks finally make it over the hill. The 10 minus 3 liter knocked out this tank, but we established a nice little fire group here. And in terms of CV, uh, VP, more or less, I, I I do control this board, and this board is now in dispute because what's hiding underneath there, we don't know. This board is precarious. Now I see it as precarious. Before I didn't see it as precarious, but uh, quite a few the tanks were taken out. Here's the 50L AT gun. This guy deserved to uh, have the uh, cross of iron with diamonds, oak leaves, and and um, and swords, um, he ba and, and so did the nine minus one leader. They basically took out all the tanks that were foolishly advanced into this location here. He's keeping a little bit of armor in reserve. The Stukas are out in full play, and uh, we did wreck some damage here, but not enough. Here is um, a mouth, two mouthed weapons. The Stug came around this way to try to prevent these guys from routing. Uh, it just prolonged their agony for another couple of turns and then before they were eliminated. Staller. Staller. Oh well. Mouthed. Let's see what's going to happen here. That's 5A. 5B. We jumped into close combat with the Stug. I don't think we managed to do anything. And uh, Yarmouth here is with a uh, conscript, I believe, a conscript in the AT gun. And uh, we're playing uh, musical chairs with the KV-1 and the engineers. Um, these two tanks were taken out by Stuka attacks. And that kind of tipped the board. And this AT gun is now positioned to pepper these units over here. Uh, we did a great job at um, at um, gaining concealment, maintaining concealment, and uh, over here, it wasn't an easy um, uh, position to take because there was concealment, there were breaks in the line of sight, and there was a crew that could self-rally. That came from this tank. <laughs> yeah. Here, all hell is bro broken loose, but I advanced a AT gun up here, 
uh, and I chose to put my armor around the bend. And this time, I was really shy about this fellow here. And um, as you can see, these broken units here are because the 10 minus 3 with the heavy laid waste to them, or broken. Laid waste is too harsh. This fire group here will advance in this direction here and try to expel the Russians from there. And you'll see what happens later in a second or two. I managed to get a tank in there. Wow. I don't remember that. Anywho. 6A. I didn't say anything perverted. I said 6A. 6 Alpha. Get your minds out of the gutter, guys. Now here is my kill stack. Believe it or not. Here are a bunch of Russian units fending off all these illustrious bastards. Excuse my language. Uh, this AT gun is moving forward. This AT gun has the beat on this stack here. And Stalar is pushing this way from uh, the south. He's pushing the Germans back. Stalar and a couple of squads here and there. This guy is out in the open, I believe. Wow. Managed to get somebody up in the second floor. And I believe at least one unit has an AT gun. These guys were like, whoo. The moment they saw the 152 KV-1 coming at them, they, they kind of uh, did all sorts of things. ELR, battle-hardened, broke, half-squatted, the whole kid in caboodle. <laughs> the whole kid in caboodle. Wiltz is up there. Now look at that. Look at that. They advanced those those tanks advanced and went headlong against these units here. And like I said before, these units that were here previously now uh, formed uh, a potential uh, potential uh, assault group to expel the Russians from the forest road. But these guys here are established. They're good. They're eating their uh, Russian MREs and. Uh, they're saying, ah, we're not going to go into battle. Let, let, let's, let them dislodge me from here. Same thing for those folks. Let's go on. 6B. We're still in melee here. I don't know why. Uh, this MMG recovered. Uh, we got ourselves a wounded uh, hero. They're trying to uh, get these guys expelled. Uh, the ATR uh, uh, boys are on the prowl. Uh, this fellow here broke, they managed to broke and he routed back. Um, here we, we smashed the KV-1 into the wooden building and we have the beat on him. Um, and I have no idea what happened to the tank wheel was over here. It's like almost he disappeared. And this, this, this tank was taken out by uh, Stuka as well. And um, goodness knows what this fellow is doing here, but we advanced the ATR all the way up there. All the way up there. Seven A. Seven A. Finally, one ATR got shocked. This guy, this guy's mouth. This fellow here is uh, slim picking. The sniper, believe it or not, probably took out Staller here. I don't see him anymore. Um, and uh, there was a a. Um, a um, melee here with a vehicle, but the vehicle moved out of the melee. And here is the beginning of the fall of this stack here. And it's not because of these groups that have been 
uh, carefully advanced into a nice bar group? Probably because of this fellow here. Let's take a good close look at him. A 50L, ladies and gentlemen. A 50L. And believe it or not, after the Stuka attacks um, and all this chaos going on here, uh, the German player did advance into uh, City Hall or the church. What's going on here is that one tank decided to go for board number four, right here. The other tank came into the forest road. And lo and behold, I think, I believe I have another AT gun there as well. I was careful to position at least one AT gun with each fire group. I, I, if I knew better, I would have positioned a heavy uh, machine gun with at least a couple of platoons of, of uh, tanks. And you know, it's the second time I've played this um, uh, game, once at the COI level and once at the advanced squad leader level, so you, you kind of learn. And this is almost like a campaign game, really. Uh, campaign in terms of length. What do we got here, 7B? So here's the big fall of that uh, uh, Russian position. Um, and it's because of this dude here, the 50L. Take a good look at it. This guy here took out these guys here. Uh, there were some brokies here, but we managed to nail the Stug. So up here, uh, all the armor that advanced here uh, either got annihilated, shocked, or mouthed. Uh, Stalin's advance here was unsuccessful. It was uh, the first time that I've ever named a, a, a counter Staller that did not survive this scenario. Um, yeah. Due to the sniper. And we're prancing around with the KV-1 as well here. Um, were it not for this position falling, uh, I would probably have won the game. Um, yeah. Here, uh, eventually it looks like they will, sorry, try and Saved you guys from a sneeze there. Uh, eventually, they'll try and engage in close combat. These guys are moving cautiously, but now uh, the 10 minus 3 leader is situated here, preventing the Russians from re establishing a foothold in those foxholes there. 7. B. 8A. So here what happened was the German advance was thwarted by a couple of second line elite squads or 548s, I think they were, 528s, a couple of conscripts, uh, all hell broke loose. Um, this guy's walking around stunned. I think I hit him with a heavy. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple of units positioned here to eliminate them for failure to route. There was no quarter declared, and uh, these units were either pinned or their attack was thwarted. We have quite a few uh, things that have broken down here. I still have a 6 to 8 in there. Uh, and over here, this position, this whole position is about to collapse for the Russians. I think this assault here was brilliantly done. Uh, broken guns. Here we are firing back and laying down residuals all over the place. It was a partial turn. I saved it in any case. Here again, it's going uh, all sorts. All sorts is going are, are going down here. Um, this is really what um, did the Russians in. 
the fall of this position. I had them too squashed um, instead of spread out. Um, I think that was my biggest folly. And uh, the KV1 kind of survived. It survived until the end. Here again, we're peppering the Germans like you wouldn't believe. So this was 8B. With 8B, hey, we took out a couple of uh, uh, vehicles in blazing glory. Um, somebody got uh, an hack on that position, so we went back and sealed and reoccupied it. It's a stone building, so you can't go wrong with that. Uh, there's the 10 minus 3 trying to um, uh, eliminate any Russian unit here. Um, we did advance a couple of units here and there, trying to take over the position and expel them. We put him here as a guard, so he can't advance. And um, finally, the Russian army is seeing the day of light uh, because they're on a road. And uh, by exposing them, they could probably f travel a total of close to 24 hexes and try to upset the balance here or even go into board number one. And once Mark saw that I was trying to penetrate back into board number one, he, he brought some reinforcements to, to change the course of action. Uh, this building wouldn't fall. It wouldn't fall no matter uh, no matter what. We, we ended up breaking at least two uh, of their AT guns trying to expel them from there. Um, the demo guy never got a chance to, to, uh, to uh, make a difference. I believe the shock guy just flipped over, done. 9A, we're beginning towards the end here. 9A, um, here's the reinforcements. Uh, but we did manage to immobilize them. And uh, the crew um, uh, abandoned the vehicle. Here, we managed to recover some of the, the brokies and they're going to counterattack. He basically has a, about two or three squads left from all that attack, the rest are brokies. We're going to reoccupy the position. He kind of overrun. He didn't kind of. He overran that position, but was not able to uh, take over the uh, the church slash um, slash uh, city hall. And down here, the tanks didn't fare well against the AT guns. The Russian AT guns. 9B. 9B, we got a pinned unit here. Something went down here. Oh, yeah. We started peppering them here. Um, blocked in melee there. Uh, a crew versus a tank without functioning MGs. Brilliant. Uh, brilliant. And here's the KV-1 still back uh, as a holdout. And he, his uh, goal will be to try and, and reoccupy this board. Um, he left uh, a lot of wrecks in his path here, <laughs> a lot of wrecks. Um, and somehow we're trying to upset the balance here. Uh, the Germans are advancing here, keeping some units here. And the thing that you need to know is that even the trucks count as VP, at least uh, one VP, if I remember correctly. So don't think that tanks, uh, that those, uh, those trucks are useless. You can use them to, uh, upset the balance of who controls the board. What am I doing? All right. Mm, 10A. 10A, and then there's 10B. Um, so 10A, this is how it looks like. All these guys are done for. Um, we won a couple of, uh, of uh, uh, close combats here. Um, we played them until the end. Um, we got here a foothold on board two, the units that were brought here to uh, try and upset the balance were not really enough to change anything. Uh, and this KV-1 is going to be 
trying to take a, a, a run for board one. Uh, the AT gun has that hex covered. We have another uh, hex covered by the uh, uh, armed half track. So everything looks fine and dandy. And despite the DM counter here, these units were never gave up their position and were never in a, in a position to, uh, um, to be uh, evicted from there. So let's look at 10B. 10B, the end, finally. And um, we put, I put stars where, uh, where we had a control and where we didn't. So basically, if I remember correctly, we got one, two Germans, one, two German, uh, two German um, boards in control without any dispute, two, two um, uh, Russian boards here are in dispute, uh, and then by virtue of advancing into this board, uh, I think there was a, just a handful of VPs by which Mark won. Um, not to say that his victory was not great. Every, any victory, including a Pyrrhic victory, is something to be proud of. Um, and again, I think the big uh, factor was uh, the, one, the, the two elements that made a big difference for some reason or another wasn't firepower. It was that AT gun, 50L, that, that was positioned in a position that was so precarious, moved up without any hindrance, and blew the heck out of, uh, I don't know, six or, nine, six or nine engineers? Staller didn't make a difference. Uh, the Stukas made a difference by blowing up those uh, Russian tanks. And the ATRs made a difference nearly by blowing up uh, quite a few uh, German Panzers and Stugs. And that was it, guys. And it took us quite a few versions of, of Vassal and quite a bit of time to finish the scenario, but it was uh, well played. It was very interesting. It took a lot of time, and I highly recommend Breakout from Borisov. Guys, um, it's going to be past Christmas when you see this video, so Happy New Year uh, for 2024. Uh, may things look a lot better than they did in 2023. And um, have a great time. Take care. Bye.